morning all. Now I spent all of yesterday playing around with the wearable project. This is the little wearable device which ultimately will go on my wrist I suppose. Uh, this is, well the wearable is the receiver and this is the transmitter. I've made a few modifications to this. I've built a nice little transmitter mast there with the uh, NRF data transceiver perched on the top and it's plugged into one of these little converter boards and all this is is just um, takes uh, these six lines into this eight-way connector for the transceiver and adds into it 3.3 volts from this 3.3 volt regulator so you can put 5 volts in 3.3 volts comes out goes to the transceiver and of course all the data signals can be 5 volt because the transceiver is 5 volt tolerant now the primary function of this project hasn't changed. It's still that the transmitter transmits, uh, amongst other things, all of the analog values on all these analog pins A0 to A5 in a packet of data over to the receiver. And as you can see, the receiver on the OLED display shows all those values A0 to A5. And if I interfere with these analog signals, we should get some movement on these numbers. It's difficult because it's running very slow at the moment. Yeah, I've just got uh, one went up to, that's it, several went up to 1,023 and then to zero because it's probably picking up mains hum, so it's swinging wildly between the two extremes. But notice that I've also now added an OLED to the transmitter. And the purpose of this is to display information that's actually coming back from the receiver. So on the receiver, I put a packet count. This simply counts the number of packets that the receiver has received. But the receiver is now sending that packet count, 2,469, back to the transmitter. There's a slight delay. I'm not quite sure why that is. I've got some theories about that. So the packet count is coming back, but look, look at this, also the battery value here, the LiPo percentage is 34.7, and this is reading 3470. I haven't managed to work out how to get this to come across as a float yet, but the data is being sent back. So how is it that the receiver can send data back to the transmitter? Well, it's because of the way these transceivers work. This transmitter, when it sends a packet from the transmitter to the receiver, sends the packet and then expects the receiver to send an acknowledgement packet back. Now, if this thing doesn't see the acknowledgement packet within a certain period of time, it will retransmit that packet of data. It's a sort of data integrity system. The transmitter does everything it can to ensure that the data gets to the receiver intact. And there is a mechanism. It's not enabled by default, but you can switch it on to enable the receiver to put actual data in its acknowledgement packet, the packet that goes from the receiver back to the transmitter. And that's what I've done here. I'm putting in the packet count as an integer, and I'm also putting in the battery percentage level also as an integer, because as I say, I haven't worked out how to do it as a float yet. And so that data is being sent from the receiver back to the transmitter. And so of course I had to put an OLED on the transmitter in order to display that data to, uh, to see that it was coming over properly. Now, why am I doing this? Why have I modified the wearable device so that it can send information back to the transmitter? Well, I've been inspired. And I've been inspired by this. It's the Cheap Ass Quadcopter Build Part 1. Now this is uh, on the YouTube channel iForce2D and this is a chap called Chris who's building a very cheap quadcopter, but not only is he saving money on things like the frame and all of the quadcopter components, he's also saving money on the radio control transmitter and receiver by using the NRF modules. So the radio control transmitter is gonna be something like this with an Arduino, uh, possibly an OLED, certainly an NRF transceiver, and then potentiometers on these analog inputs for the various quadcopter controls. 
So just like my Hubsan controller has uh, throttle here and rudder or yaw on uh, that pot and then also uh, pitch and roll on these two potentiometers. Uh, so the transmitter will have potentiometers connected to these analog inputs and this will act as the radio control transmitter. And the radio control receiver will be something like this, an Arduino Pro Mini probably for size reasons, certainly the NRF transceiver, uh, possibly wouldn't need the OLED. And then the receiver's microcontroller would need to generate all the uh, pulse signals for the servos uh, to control uh, the uh, electronic speed controllers. Of course, quadcopter doesn't have any servos, but the, the four electronic speed controllers for the motors and any other functions that require a servo input. So if you imagine this receiver flying around in the sky attached to a quadcopter, controlling the quadcopter, you might still be thinking, well, why do you need to send information from the receiver, a radio control receiver, back to the radio control transmitter? And this, of course, is telemetry. Um, the guy controlling the quadcopter, standing on the ground with the transmitter, needs to know certain important information, one of which, of course, is how well charged the battery is. So this battery at the moment is 49% charged. This device is flying around in the sky. You can't see that it's got uh, half its battery power left, unless, of course, it sends that information back to the transmitter so that the guy flying the aircraft can see that information. Now, I've acquired the basic skills for flying a quadcopter around by learning to fly on this Hubsan uh, X4. And so I'm now keen to start building my full-size quadcopter project and I'm thinking probably I'll go down the route of the ArduPilot Mega system. But I was all set to buy expensive radio control equipment, transmitter and receiver, but now I don't think I will. I think I'm going to build a radio control transmitter using an Arduino and the NRF transceiver and build a radio control receiver, something along the lines of this wearable, but uh, also with the necessary hardware to generate the servo signals. So I'm very interested in what uh, iForce2D is doing and I'm watching his videos with great interest, uh, particularly this cheap ass quadcopter build. But he's doing a lot of testing of the uh, radio control equipment on a car because, of course, a ground-based vehicle is a lot safer. Um, Chris has also uh, inspired me to do this telemetry thing. He, he did the telemetry thing before I did, so I'm coming in late to the party, really. But uh, these videos are well worth a watch. Uh, return to home stuff using GPS. This is all very interesting and uh, heading in the direction of getting the... Uh, quadcopter with full autonomous functionality and this homemade radio control equipment all up and running. So just a quick look at the software that made this um, acknowledgement packet possible. I know software is not very interesting so I'll keep this fairly short. In setup of course I've had to add a load of stuff for the OLED display. Now previously in terms of the radio transceiver we had a radio begin and a radio open writing pipe. So there's an additional line here now, radio enable ACK payload, and that's what allows the data to be transferred back from receiver to transmitter in the acknowledgement packet. Now in the loop function, um, previously we just had a radio write. Well now there's a new thing, after the radio write, we do a radio is ACK load, uh, sorry, is ACK payload available, and if there is uh, acknowledgement payload data available, you simply do a radio read to pull it in. Now here we are on the receiver side uh, in setup. We do a radio begin, also do this radio enable ACK payload, that has to be done on both receiver and transmitter side. Uh, we do the radio open reading pipe and the radio start listening, those were there previously. And then on the receiving side in the loop function, previously we had if radio available, then uh, radio read that data. The only addition now is radio write ACK payload. 
So as soon as we've read the packet that's being sent from transmitter to receiver, we send the data in the packet that goes back the other way. Now I'm sending my data packets incredibly slowly. I'm actually only sending one packet per second. And the main reason for that was because this display library, the Adafruit display library, is very, very slow. It takes a long time to update this display. And it was getting tied up in the uh, display routines and missing packets of data. So I think once the display routines are out, we can speed this up. And of course, for radio control, we'll need a packet rate of at least 50 packets a second, I would think. Now, I'm sure there are going to be some radio control enthusiasts who look at this and think, how on earth can you even contemplate using these cheap transceivers for radio controlled flying models? Well, I think this is going to be OK. I mean, yes, it's cheap, and that is a primary concern. If range uh, becomes a problem, I can start looking at using these higher power uh, transceivers with the uh, uh, screw on antenna. Also, you have data integrity here. You know, these packets are being transmit. And if they don't go over cleanly, then the acknowledge packet doesn't come back and the data packet is transmit again. So as long as it can all be done quickly enough, the data integrity from transmitter to receiver is going to be excellent. Now, of course, also you've got this telemetry path back from the receiver to the transmitter. So I think there are compelling reasons for using these data transceivers as a radio control system. Now, I've just been looking at this transmitter and I think I've missed a trick here because the OLED connects to SCL and SDA, which is on these last four pins. So if I'd had a wider board instead of this um, six uh, hole wide board. I've gone for one of this 10 hole wide board. I could have plugged that into all 10 of these uh, socket connections and actually mounted the OLED onto the backboard. So I definitely think I'll do that. Anyway, while I wait for all my quadcopter bits to arrive, I'm going to carry on watching iForce 2D and his Arduino NRF 24L01 quadcopter. Cheerio! Hello, in this video we are finally going to see this quadcopter flying.